While the Americans perfected daylight precision bombing on German industries, their British brothers-in-arms continued their tactics of night saturation bombing on Germany's cities and population. The plane with the most prominent role in these operations was the Avro Lancaster. Bill Randall piloted one during his service with the Royal Canadian Air Force. We were very young people in those days. The average age of my crew in 1944 was 20 and a half. And that was typical of most bomber crews at that late date in the war, really. So it was an exhilarating time for us and daredevils that we were, I suppose. Uh, I would certainly think twice and three times perhaps today before I, I would do some of the things in an aircraft of this stature uh, that we did in those days. Taking off singly from their bases at sunset, RAF airmen flew in a bomber stream miles long as opposed to the tight formations of the Yanks, single Charlies as the saying went, aircraft with their undersides painted black to help hide them from enemy eyes. They straggled across Europe, each navigator on his own. I, I consider some of my experiences as absolute fairyland stuff at nighttime. You see things at, at nighttime, you don't see in the daytime. Uh, searchlights, of course, were all around you uh, on occasion, depending where you were in Europe, and uh, great fingers of light coming at you and all around you and, and flashing on other aircraft or about you and so on. Cause that's when you knew when you weren't alone, you know, up there over the target. But uh, the so-called anti-aircraft fire that was thrown up at us also was uh, quite vivid and uh, if it was heavier anti-aircraft fire would be bursting around us in great orange flames and, and over the target things got much lighter and you'd see these great puffs of smoke hanging in the air but the light anti-aircraft fire was fascinating they'd be shooting at you from the ground with simply uh, with the uh, with orlikan uh, ammunition for example and uh, it would come up, up at you and you think it's coming right at you and then it would fall away because certain, certain of the bullets were, were tracer and you could see them at night coming at you, but they'd fall away before they even got to your altitude and those were fascinating things to watch if you had time to watch them. With the help of navigational aids and pathfinders who laid target flares, the British relentlessly pounded one German city after another. The length proved itself to be an outstanding aircraft with tremendous range and lifting capacity big enough to accommodate the largest of the Allied blockbuster bombs. Canadian Warplane Heritage owns the Minarski Memorial Lancaster, one of just two flying in the world. Once destined for the scrap heap, they acquired her in 1974 and have since restored her to her former grandeur. Bill remembers her maiden voyage back into the air. In September of 1988, when this aircraft first flew after all those years of restoration, that's when it, we all had serious thoughts and, and thoughts of nostalgia. Really, most of us old gaffers were weeping the day this thing took off the ground for the first time, and weeping with each other because uh, it was nostalgia. We had flown an aircraft with our crews of this kind, and just to hear the four, the four Rolls-Royce engines roaring across the sky was enough to send shivers up our spine. 